Alright, so this is going to be a shape of code 2 upgrade. Um, first thing is, I really didn't like the mill area. It's only about a foot by a foot on, on the shape of code. So I'm going to increase that. I went on open build and I grabbed three 1.5 meter aluminum extrusions, the V slots. Uh, I got the black anodized ones for service hardness. And I'm going to go ahead and leave these at 1.5 for the longitudinal axis and then I'm going to cut one in half and double it up for my horizontal axis so that will be a 0.75 um, and other than that the I'm going to need to step up the output torque of the motors so I went with the NIMB 24 stepper motors um, they have about 450 ounce inches of torque so plenty of torque for this application uh, however, you can't just strap on any big motor and you know you're good to go. You got you might be limited by the the belt drive. So on open build, you can actually get um, what they call the GT3 belts, and these have a three millimeter pitch, and so they're a lot more. There's a lot more bite in them, so there's no slippage uh, if you have too high of an output torque. Uh, one more of advice is the ones the the timing pulleys that they sell an open build for these belts. They're actually only meant for the NEMA 23 standard, so it's a quarter inch output shaft. The NEMA 24s, however, have a uh, uh, eight millimeter shaft, so I'm gonna need to bore these out um, to actually be able to fit on the output shafts. So just a word of advice, you know, if you're gonna do this upgrade, use the NEMA 23 uh, stepper motors. So, uh, next upgrade. I'm going to put on some uh, limit switches so I don't run into anything and I'm going to try and use these rocker switches as an uh, e-stop and the, the, biggest, uh, well, the biggest change I'm going to actually use a, a breakout board with a desktop computer. Uh, I just noticed that with the Arduino and the G-Shield there's a lot of delay and it's not instant control so I'm going to um, you know, use the breakout board with, with Mach 3 on the desktop computer. Just have a designated desktop. Uh, it's a lot easier if using uh, certain programs as well. So, yeah, other than that, I'm going to just basically need to modify things as I go along. So, just for instance, um, you know, these motors are definitely not going to mount. Um, you know, they're different standards for NEMA. And so, I'm going to make a new custom plate for the Z-axis. So, just wanted to show everyone a quick stress analysis to see if I do actually need bracketing in the linear um, on the middle of the linear rail. So, what I did was I just did a quick estimate of weight on the gantry and just weighed the motors, the Z axis assembly, and uh, the linear rail here, and added up a total force. And um, so that came to like 13.75 or something like that. I did a quick estimate of how much force it actually takes to um, mill something like aluminum and you know just by estimation I'm figuring about 15 to 20 pounds uh, if the feed rate on the Z axis is high enough so all I did was take a, a drill and you know push it on and see how much uh, you know, force is translated through. So I uh, took that over to SolidWorks and um, what I did was there's four points of contact. There's two for each wheel um, within the V-slot uh, V-slot extrusion, and you place that in the middle of your linear rail to uh, for the most deflection, um, which be basically due to the most moment. And um, you know, plot those points. You have to do a, um, I believe it's called a split line, and you just do a sketch, and then you just do a split line on the uh, projected split line on the extrusion and I uh, basically divided up uh, 33.75 pounds to those four points of contact and that translated to a uh, deflection of about 0.74 of a millimeter so though that's not a lot that's enough for me to actually want to put a single bracket in the middle of the aluminum extrusion so just wanted to show you that real quick uh, it's probably worth it over the long run so there's no uh, creep or any kind of you know 
weird deflection if it gets hit or something like that. Alright, so here's a modification I'm going to need to do on all the gantry plates um, that the shape ago came with. So the center to center is now different for the the V slot 20 by 40 millimeter linear rails. So I'm gonna actually need to drop this through hole down. Now I'm doing that just because I don't want to bring the centric nut through hole up. Um, the length is such that it'll create more of a slot so that's out of the question. So I'm gonna need to drop this down and um, on the plus side this guy is not gonna affect the idler pulley um, going around the timing pulley. So, uh, you know, that's the, the only option re realistically besides making um, completely new holes. However, um, the way I'm going to do this is, so basically went ahead and measured my wheel, measured the linear rail, and then create a distance off that. And you're going to do that um, outside of the portion with the chamfer. So you're going to measure from the inner radius um, without the chamfer. So create your distance. I got mine. I calculated this, but this number turned out to be uh, a lot better. So how I'm doing this is I did create templates out of wood first, and that worked. However, I'm gonna I did the uh, final template out of steel. There was just too much play involved with the wood uh, when you're dealing with millimeters. So, um, but this worked out really well. This steel piece with the the extension and um, the bearings on. So the uh, there's no play, not a lot of play really, um, but the centric nut is at a horizontal so I could bend it up or twist it up for tightening and then um, rotating it down for loosening. But, you know, if it's at horizontal and it's um, tight like this, that means it, it's a really good fit. A couple things. So the Venema 24 motors are actually running into the idler pulleys nuts and bolts. So. I'm going to go ahead and um, need to make some spacers. Uh, the motor mounts themselves actually line up with the, the slots on the gantry plate, so that's a plus. But I'm going to need some spacers for all four mounts for each motor. Progress report. Now, got the motor on again at the spacers to offset the interference between the motor and the nuts right here from the idler pulley. Now, everything has to line up. So the wheels, the idler pulley, the timing pulley. So what I did was I got the wheels lined up with the linear rail and then mounted those. And then I went ahead and put the idler pulley on, but I had to do a custom spacer right there which I just 3d printed and then after I put those on put the timing pulley on based on the alignment of those other components so as you can see they're pretty well lined <laughs> One more issue. Now these nuts right here on the bottom end are actually scraping along the new linear rail. It's just a different type of tolerancing. Now it's such a, uh, a very slim window. On this side the gantry slides just fine. However this is just positioned or you know the, the tolerancing between the, the nut and that linear rail is so that it starts scraping a little bit. It was weird because the first time I put it together it it worked just fine but um, I'll have to do something. I think for now I'm gonna just 
shave off a little bit of that nut and see if I can get away with that. 